Okay, I promised you I was going to share this with you. I, this I find absolutely amazing. Uh, Agence France Press published this piece yesterday, and uh, Linda Henkel wrote it. It's in the area of memory research. And they released a study this week that showed that people who took photographs of things, people, they would walk around a museum, take a museum tour, and some people took pictures and some people didn't. And then after the museum tour, they would ask people about the details of the things in the museum. The people who took pictures did not remember as well as the people who didn't. In fact, Henkel, the author of the study, said people so often whip out their camera almost mindlessly to capture a moment to the point that they are missing what is happening right in front of them. Well, I think that's part of it. And the test was done, by the way, the day after the museum. Participants were less accurate in recognizing the items they had photographed compared with those that they had only observed. She calls this the photo-taking impairment effect. I would, I would suggest that there is something else at work here. Back in 1978, when I first met Gottfried Mueller, who has now passed on, but was my mentor for many, many years, until he died uh, five, six years ago. I met him in 1978, and uh, he ran this uh, Salem Children's Village program, international relief programs, etc., out of Stuttgart, Germany, which is where Louise and I ended up living for a year in the 80s. And we based the Children's Village in, in, uh, in New Hampshire. We just had a board meeting this morning, in fact. Uh, Hunterschool.org and SalemChildrensVillage.org. We based that on his model in Germany. And one of the things that he just personally did in his living space, was he never had pictures of living things. And I was like, why? Now, he was a fairly religious guy. He, his mentor was a fellow by the name of Avram Poyak, who was a Hasidic Jew. And he and, and, and Godfrey Mueller had been raised as a Lutheran Christian, and, uh, but you know, had also been through World War II as a member of Hitler's army. And Poyak had been on the other end of Hitler's army, as it were. And the two of these guys, after the war, did this tour of churches all over Europe trying to reconcile Christians and Jews and just kind of fix stuff. And, and, but Poyak was, was Gottfried Mueller's mentor. And he said that having, making, having pictures of living things was a violation of the first commandment. Now, this is commonly held by Muslims today. I don't know that it's so common in the Hasidic community. I, I, I've, I have friends who are Hasidic Jews, and I've, I've seen pictures in their homes. Um, but, and, and, and really, it's more just like, you know, for theological places. But for Hermula, I mean, he took it very seriously. And I said, well, why would you not have pictures of living things? And he said, because it interferes with your memory of the actual living thing. I said, you know, what do you, what do you mean? And he said, think of your father. Now, my father was still alive at the time we had this conversation. He said, think of your father. I was like, okay. And he said, what did you see? He said, I'll bet you just saw a picture rather than an actual memory. And he was right. My dad and mom, when they, when they on their, I don't know, 15th or 20th anniversary, they had an official, you know, one of these fancy portraits done painting, not a painting, a photograph, you know, just a very pretty photograph of dad and mom that always sat on their dresser. And that was the picture that I pulled up in my head because I'd seen it a hundred times. I didn't remember sitting with my dad and talking to him or something like that. That's not the first thing that came to mind. The first thing that came to mind was a picture that I had seen of my own father. And Herr Miller said, see, I told you. He said, when you take pictures it overwhelms the brain. It's like, it's, like, it's like a concentrated form of reality. And it pushes out of the mind the much weaker sequential, you know, thousands of little pictures that make up an actual motion picture memory of an event. It's all replaced by a single picture of, oh, that's me there then. So Louise and I 
uh, didn't pretty much didn't take pictures for 15 years. And now, and, and, and now as our kids are, you know, and our kids at that time were fairly small, and now that our kids are grown up and we don't have pretty much any pictures of our kids, I'm sort of regretting that, frankly. But that said, I thought, you know, I, I saw this study and I thought, well, this is fascinating, you know, that, that are we destroying our ability to remember things? Are we disconnecting ourselves from reality? You know, with this Facebook era where everything is a snapshot and it's on the web. And, oh, that's what that was. That's the only thing that you remember from the event, from the white rotter rafting or from the mountain climbing or from, you know, visiting the old friend in the city or whatever, is that single photograph. Ooh. And I, and I also wonder if this is a variation on this, you know, Rudolf Steiner said that people, that children should not learn to read until after they're seven years old because the brain is not ready for it. And there are studies, and, and uh, uh, Leonard Schlein, Dr. Leonard Schlein, neurosurgeon, uh, now, now deceased, wrote about this brilliantly in a book called uh, The Alphabet Versus the Goddess. And I, I knew Leonard Schlein, uh, didn't know him well. I'd had a meal with him, and we'd spoken in a couple of venues together, had some interesting conversations. And he suggested that when you learn abstract things like alphabets before the age of seven, it causes the left hemisphere of the brain to become dominant, to be to become, because that's where abstract thought is processed, you know, the part that controls the right-hand side of the body. And that's the kind of, you know, masculine, linear, not connected to feelings. These are all in some ways cliches and in, all, in some ways have a grain of truth to them. And that leads to hierarchy and patriarchy and war. And I, whoa, that's fascinating. We wrote a whole book on that. So should we, should, should we change our culture? You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Should we discourage picture taking, or maybe just for important events, and should we teach our kids to read after the age of seven instead of before, like they do in Sweden? 